Hello everybody and welcome. Today I'm going to go over a port uh, powered air purifying respirator or PAPR that I built to go with my 3M VersaFlow hood. Anybody who's looked up on this knows that these can run about $300, another $100 for the hose, protective lenses, but it's the box itself that tends to be the really expensive part and I find to be the uh, break-in point for my entry. Uh, so what I ended up doing, so I've got two CPU blower fans, I've got a buck converter to drop my 18 plus Ryobi battery down to 12 volts and this setup, you can buy different adapters for different batteries. Uh, you can buy buck or buck boost converters. And it's simply connected in. Um, an SAE connection for uh, solar. I believe this one was 16 gauge. It was nice that it came with a power switch as well. And the box itself. And cut it on. A little bit of noise. There's a reason for that and it's because of an error on my part, but it still works. And we'll go into that in a second. But this has been an iterative process. My first go at it was a little single fan unit and this worked and you'll see the blower fan in a moment it'll exhaust out the side and this will go out to the hose and as I said this works but um, I tend to find that I need just a little bit more cooling than the single fan can use unless somebody can identify a better fan than what I'm using with a relatively decent cost point but the fan I used in that is the same I've used in this one. And the same as in this one, which was my Mark II. I went with dual fans. And as you can see, they're blower motors. They're going to exhaust the side there. A regular box fan that you get for CPUs and computers don't tend to develop the exhaust head that they need to be able to get out. They tend to recirculate a bit on themselves. I did buy one to try it out. It did say it had a higher flow rate, and as I suspected, it didn't work out as well as I had hoped. And we'll go over these different parts in a moment. Uh, I went away from this one. It's made out of uh, red oak, and it's relatively heavy for what it is. This one's made out of poplar with a uh, maple hobby pine, uh, sorry, a maple hobby plywood to help reduce in the weight. This one, the filters sat down into the unit itself and had them blocked in. This one, it's actually built into the lid a little bit, and we'll go over that in a second. But it is a significant difference in weight between the two, which is going to be very helpful. Um, the filters are 3M N95 filters. I would not recommend using this with any kind of chemical purification. If you're going to need that kind of route uh, protection, I would recommend using a properly selected uh, half face mask with the correct filters on it, not the N95s, or an actual papper. In this case, I want dust filtration for when I'm doing woodworking. And the N95, this mask doesn't sit quite well since I wear glasses. As anybody who's gone through that knows, the nose tends not to sit well with the glasses. They never build them down to support that. Whereas the hood will cover your whole face, provide face protection, as well as a cooling effect with the airflow. And it's about as annoying to put on as one of these. So with those benefits, it definitely works out for me. Since I had those filters, I wanted to go with that layout. Uh, I'm sure there are other brands that can be used. I'm sure there are other brands of hoods that could be used, different hoses. And as we talked about, you can get a different adapter for different batteries. This is all very make it work to what you need it to work. So in this case, as you can see, the filters are built up into here. I've got the little plywood right there to help as a retaining and I've got two additional sets down here and here to help with retaining it in the box and keeping it from being pulled into the fan. <coughs> these do come out. I did not glue or affix these in any way shape or form so I can get to the fans if I have to. You'll notice my fans are sanded through a thickness sander and that's because I 
miscalculated there. I took a couple points for a height measurement, but because of how uneven these were, it needed about an extra two millimeters. I am putting this box up on an Instructables. Uh, so I've already accounted for that and added an additional two millimeters into that design height. I'll also include in the description below and in the Instructables the parts I bought to support this. But like I said, the idea here that you can go through a couple different iterations to figure out what works best for you. The fans. So the power cord comes out on this side, and as you can see, I taped it down so it'd be as flush as possible. And then I notched a little hole out here so that they'll fold in. So that when I drop them in, they'll come out through the exhaust port and we'll have as flush of a mount as possible. I'm also planning on putting shims in to press these fans up against those exhaust ports just to keep any more recirculation down to a minimum. That's on both sides. Uh, as I said, SAE connections, a little wire connector, uh, positive, positive, negative, negative. Fans are connected in parallel, so they both see 12 volts. <coughs> And this can be unplugged and taken away as you need. Uh, don't leave your battery plugged in. Even if the thing is off, for some reason, it draws the battery down, even if it's not in use. The uh, primary measurements you need to worry about here, if you're not going to use the plans I provide and do something on your own, you want to maintain about 120 by 120 millimeters for the box here. Uh, that is... A little bit bigger than what the fans actually are. They do move around a little bit and that's where the shims can come in handy but you also need to be able to fit it down into there and if you try and get it as tight as possible you're going to end up having to modify the outside of the fans to get them to fit. Trust me, I know. <laughs> um, also you're going to want the uh, exhaust port for whatever hose you choose to use to fit. In this case it is a snug compression fit I'll show that in a moment. And the other one is the outlets into your center chamber. You want those to sit to where the box can seal up into those. Think, there we go. And give it as little restriction as possible. So that's actually very close to where the fan is at. There's very little overlap between the two when you fill through there. You can use any kind of halves and hinges that you need. These are just something I figured out on with my laser cutter that I like. I used them on a several different boxes I put together. I find that they give a little bit of a compression fit when they pull down and pull the lid closed. Uh, if anybody's interested, I can put together another instructable or something simple to show how those are made. And of course we got the nice compression fit. I've only got it to where it goes up to the ceiling face. I could open this up a little bit more so that that can fit in there a little bit better. But as I said, this is for filtration of fine particulate. It's not for chemicals, uh, epoxy, cleaning products or anything like that. So I don't need it quite as tight as you would need for something like that. Uh, last part here is a, a hook. Uh, I plan on hanging this on my woodworking apron. Uh, if I hang it on my belt loop, this hose is not quite long enough to reach comfortably, so it feels like it starts pulling the hood off the hood off the top of my head. So I'm going to hang this a little bit higher. I am going to build a box to hold this together. I have one for my first iteration. It's a little bulky. Uh, the idea is to get as much of this incorporated into that as possible and to put another hasp on it so this could hang from the belt loop or from the uh, woodworking apron as well. Overall, I think it works out quite well. I've used it a couple times. <clears throat> this was a little awkward, but survivable. Um, I did go from an odd connector on my first ones uh, because I had them. Uh, these, I think, worked out much better. The cable's not so thick that it gets in your way, but it's thick enough that you know it's there. Uh, it also provides less resistance to the uh, output of the battery, so you have less power losses. Uh, you actually will see a little over 12 volts from a fully charged 
battery going through this buck converter. If you do get the uh, buck converter or buck boost, you can find these where they're adjustable, uh, either with a pot in the back or with knobs on the front to change what voltage outputs that you want to see. I haven't had a problem with this one yet, but uh, I can add up in the uh, description if I change that out at some point in the future, but right now it seems to work out quite well. I would love it if anybody has any recommendations on this. Uh, I think this could be converted into a 3D print for an even lighter build. I have a small 3D printer that I haven't gotten around to using yet. This is cut out on my laser. Um, I will be putting a uh, SVG file, a PDF, and a uh, light burn file. So whatever process you want to use, whether measurements or using one of the machines to output it, to cut it, uh, whatever works for you. And it includes all the pieces except for the hinges since those are whatever somebody would want to use. But it also includes this, which I had to do by hand to size out so that it would, one, the inside would fit the filters and then the two retaining sections would be ever so slightly to provide a compression. If you can see in there, there's a little tiny ring that's also cut out. You can see the double layer there as well. And that's just to help seal that outside edge just a little bit more uh, to provide a compression to keep it together. I hope this it proves helpful to somebody. Um, I found it to be an entertaining product as I worked through the different processes. The one that I made out of oak, or the two I made out of oak, were done on the table saw. So you don't even need a laser or anything to do that. What I found is that's going to give me something consistent. Uh, and it also gave me an opportunity to make something much, much lighter. But like I said, any comments, please share them below. Um, it'll help me out. And I found that people have provided some good comments with some of my other videos that I want to share with others. So I tend to pin those if possible or add them to the description because it's a, it's a growing process. Someone has probably done this before. I didn't find a video or an instruction on how to do it. So this is my go at it. Uh, well, hopefully y'all have a great day and, uh, Keep enjoying the projects you're working on. Bye.